Part 3 The Student Roster You might run the student roster one day as a birthday list, and the next day to simply get an Excel spreadsheet with your student's name in it. Let's take a look at the student roster report. Like the individual student progress report and all other reports, we have three tabs. We will not be discussing them again in the depth we did previously, but it is important to note that this report can be run either as a PDF or to an Excel spreadsheet. This is set in the Format tab. A teacher can name the report whatever is appropriate for the report they are printing. They can again choose the class or classes for which they want to print and how they want to sort the students in their report. You then arrive at a display area where you choose what data you want to appear in your report. By default, the student's name is selected on this report. You can choose not to show the student's name, but you would first have to select another field of data to show in its place. To choose which fields to display, you will click into the drop-down menu that says Add Columns. A list of options appear in this drop-down menu. If you wish to use a particular field, you will choose the Add button inside this drop-down menu to add it to the report. Once you add a field of data, it is removed from the Add Columns drop-down so you cannot accidentally include the student's grade level twice. The exception to this rule is with the very first option in the drop-down menu the blank option. You can add as many blank fields as you wish. When you do add a blank column, you are also given the opportunity to rename it whatever you would like. So I could print a column called participation to mark with check, check plus, or check minus. As we are out and about on our field trip. To remove an item from the display list, click the minus button beside that option in the list. To adjust the order of the columns in your report, use the order arrows to move items up or down in the list. Choose the students from the students tab and you set your format preferences. Finally, click run report and view your results. Categories and assignments. Before you begin creating assignments, it is recommended that you review district created categories so that you can group assignments by type. Categories are broad classifications in which you group similar types of assignments. Examples of categories include homework, tests, and quizzes. In Dallas ISD, the school district has already created categories for you. While they have created the categories for you, there will be some category details that you can modify. Let's take a look at the categories and dig into what you can adjust. To access a list of categories, click on Grading in the Navigation menu, then choose Categories from the sub-menu that appears. You will open up a page with the table display of the categories the district has created and pushed out to your gradebook. The first column of the table provides you with arrows you can use to adjust the order any category appears in your gradebook. Each category is associated with a color and category name, all viewable from this page. Categories that were created by the district will show a schoolhouse symbol in the category name. These are the categories you are required to use in your gradebook. These are the categories that influence the final grade calculation for your student's mark. You will note columns in the table showing you which classes use each category and whether that category is active or not. Finally, there is a pencil icon in the last column that allows you to edit category information. As a teacher, you are restricted from making certain edits to the categories. For example, you cannot change the name, the color, or the description of the category. But there are some optional default items you can employ your preferences in setup. Let's take a look. To edit a category, click the Edit Pencil icon. A window opens up on the top of the page with three tabs inside. The first tab shows you the name, description, color, and activity status of the category. You are not allowed to change the details of these parameters. In the second tab, however, you find the editable fields. This tab, the assignment default tab, gives you the option of setting up default settings so that when you create an assignment and specify the category of that assignment, it automatically picks up these default values. The first thing you are asked is about score type. What this is really asking you is, how do you, the teacher, want to enter marks for assignments of this type? You could choose to enter points. This means you would enter the number eight when you want to specify that the student earned eight out of 10 possible points. 
Another score type option is to enter the actual percentage grade a student received. Instead of eight out of 10 points, if I were marking percentage, I would enter in my gradebook that the student received an 80%. Another option is to use the actual grade scale associated with your class. If that grade scale is a zero to 100 scale, then you are essentially entering percentage if you choose grade scale as an option. If your grade scale includes items like satisfactory, unsatisfactory, etc., as is often the case in pre-K and kindergarten, then you can simply mark the assignment as S or U, or whatever those grade scale items may be. Finally, the last option is to use the collected only scores type option. This is typically used with standards-based grading, but can be used by traditional graders as long as the assignment of this category do not count in the final grade. This gives the teacher an option to mark with check marks that something is completed or observed. A traditional grader might use this for, yes, everyone turned in their field trip permission slip. Also, in this assignment default tab, you are asked about points. This allows you to set the default amount of points associated with an assignment. For instance, maybe my homework is graded out of 10 points, while my tests are graded out of 100. Anything set in that category assignment default information can be overridden at the individual assignment level itself. Along with the default points associated with the assignment, a teacher can add extra bonus points by choosing the plus extra points button on the left-hand side of this window pane. This will give the teacher an additional box where they can enter the possible extra points amount. There is also a plus weight button here. This does not have anything to do with final grade calculation, but allows the teacher to adjust the weight of various assignments within the gradebook. The default weight of every assignment in the gradebook is one. Unless a teacher really knows the impact of changing this weight value, they should leave this alone. Finally, as a teacher, you will have the option to set up some default publication information. Do you want to publish assignments within this category immediately or on the due date, etc.? We will talk more about publishing assignments when we create the individual assignments. You can specify whether you want to publish scores for assignments of this category by checking or not checking the publish scores checkbox. And lastly, you can specify whether you want assignments from this category to count in the final grade or not. The last tab in this window is view all. This tab shows you the various category that already exists within your gradebook. There is no capability of editing anything in this tab. So to reiterate, as a teacher, you cannot change the name, color, or description, or category. You are not allowed to change the activity status. You are allowed to adjust settings in the assignment defaults tab. If you have questions about what you are setting, please use the help menu, talk with a colleague, or reach out to your instructional coach. Viewing Final Grade Calculation Setup. The final grade calculation rules for your courses will be set up by Dallas ISD system administrators. To view the final grade calculation has been set up and pushed out to your gradebook, click on the teacher name in the lower left hand side of the navigation menu. This expands a user menu from which you will select settings. There are several setting options given on this page that allow you, the teacher, to set up your preferences for how things display in your gradebook. You can also enter class descriptions of your courses that would be viewable to parents and students. But the item we are concerned with at the moment is the traditional grade calculation option. Choose this option. When the traditional grade calculation page opens, note that all courses you teach are shown with expandable slash collapsible arrows. You will see all the internal terms associated with your courses. If you teach a year-long course, you will see your semester, trimester, or six weeks terms, etc. The formula type will notify you of the method the district has specified that will be used in calculating the final grade for that particular term. You will not be able to edit the final grade calculation rules, but you will be able to view what the district did specifically set up. To view this, click into the edit pencil for any given term. A window will open with grayed out values, but you will be able to see the method of calculations as well as the values associated with any terms or categories that do impact the final grade. 
If you have any questions about your final grade calculation, reach out to your instructional coach. Working with assignments. Now it is time to delve into assignments. There are a few different options you have at your disposal for viewing and working with assignments. One of those options is access from the dashboard. This is the recent assignments listing that shows up on the right-hand side of your Unified Classroom dashboard. Click the Unified Classroom name or logo on the left of your screen to return to the dashboard and see the recent assignments there. While this is a great tool to get into a recent assignment quickly, sometimes you need to see assignments that do not appear on the dashboard. If that is the case, you will choose the grading charm from the navigation menu. You can access your assignments using either the assignment list slash activity link or score sheet link that appears. Teachers will generally develop a preference for one or the other, but there is no right or wrong option. Assignment list. When you view the assignment slash activities list page, you will find exactly that, a list of your assignments and activities. You can choose the term for which you wish to view assignments in the term drop-down menu. Every column on the list is sortable, so you can organize your assignments by category or by due date, and etc. Along with sorting by column header, you do have a filter option on the top right-hand side of the page. Other informative columns in the table presented are submitted slash done and graded columns. In each case, here you will see a little gray circle. This gray circle turns green in stages as your student's work is completed and turned in online. So if half your class has submitted work, you will see half gray and half green circle. Similarly, as you grade students assignments, the graded circle indicator will also begin to turn green. This is particularly helpful at the end of the term when you need to make sure grades are entered into your gradebook. You can sort on this column and will immediately be shown the assignments that still needed to be graded or have missing or incomplete assignments that need to be turned into zeros. If you hover over any assignment, a couple great icons appear. You should recognize these as they are the same options that appear when you hover over an assignment on the recent assignments area of the dashboard. The eyeball to take a deeper look, the calculator to jump to a page to review or enter marks, and the pencil to edit the details of the assignment. Likewise, clicking on the name of the assignment itself will take you to a page to enter marks. 